Welcome to Croatia. So today, customization of the Remak, one of the most exceptional cars of our time. I'm super excited. This is the man himself, this is Mate. Hi, great nice to, to meet you great guys. Great to be here. We are here in eight locations actually. So we will go to see some of them today and then later we'll have some fun with the car. Okay, I'm gonna take you into the configuration room. I would really like this one. This is like the Batmobile. So we just got to the testing site now. <laughs> Welcome to Croatia. So today, customization of the Remak, one of the most exceptional cars of our time. I'm super excited. And, surprise, surprise, there's a Taycan here and I'm like, what the hell is that doing there? And I'm so excited to also be able to drive the Taycan then. A complete surprise and because Porsche owns 15% of Remak, so that's why they're actually picking us up today with the Taycan. So that's so epic. So let's go for a drive in the Taycan. And the crew today, Alex, Ruben, Charlie in the house, who you know who jumped into the ocean in, uh, in Monaco. Hello. Thank you uh, for picking us up. That's a surprise. We weren't expecting that. <laughs> it's all about surprises. That's fantastic. I, I look forward to trying it. Wait, should we go straight for the acceleration? Oh. Flat out on the throttle, huh? Yes. Okay, so I've got whole, so I'm flat out on the... Oh, shit. Foot plus. Yeah. Okay, now foot full on the brake. Yes. Flat out on the throttle. Now. Launch control activated. I hope this is patient, this car. Ah, green, green. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that, that's so, oh, that's amazing. This is the better, this is like the power of e-mobility, huh? Jesus. And that, that was probably now like, if I had to guess, I would say 2.6, 2. Uh, 2. if I had to guess. And the Remax does 1.9. So, pff. So I've just found out Miro is the Remax test driver. So uh, a bit of a preview, is the Remax C2 uh, quite cool? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you don't need to say more than that. We get the point. I'm pretty confident we don't need to explain to you anything. Just let you... Just push the accelerator once and I'll be, uh, I'll be yes. convinced. <laughs> it's Nico Rosberg here. Hello, Lucky. Lucky, I'm driving. I'm driving in a car with Nico Rosberg, so he took the call instead of me. Can I call you later? <laughs> okay. Bye, bye, Lucky. Bye, bye. You speak to Miro bye -bye. later. Bye, bye. bye, -bye. Thanks. Great to speak to you. Bye, 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 bye. -bye. <laughs> Please don't run off. Run on the the bearded guy. We need him. Yes, yes. <laughs> so where do I where do I put the car? Just leave it here. And we can I see you are having some fun, Nico. No, this was an amazing surprise. <laughs> they, did, they didn't say. Uh, how do we do it? Like this? So everybody, in case you don't, in case you have noticed that this is the man himself, this is Mate. Hi, great nice to, to meet you great guys. Great to be here. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks for coming all the way. We were uh, talking about it, I think, already a year and a half ago. One and a half years now, yeah. In, in Portugal, when, when we... I think Vegas. In Vegas, okay. In a nightclub in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. so uh, welcome to Rimac. The company, as you know, was 10 years ago, just myself in a garage. So we are still in a very much, you know, phase of expansion. We are here in eight locations, actually. Really? So we will go to see some of them today. Uh, actually two, so the headquarters here and our production location. And then later we'll have some fun with the car. Great. And this was the first car that we built, so that was in 2011. We were like six guys at that time. We had absolutely no idea what we were doing. Uh, I hired the first guys in April 2011, and we showed the car for the first time in uh, September 2011 at Frankfurt Motor Show. <laughs> so. Uh, it was totally, we were totally inexperienced. We ran out of money immediately because the investors screwed us. So it was a total mess. And at that time we started to work for other car companies to survive. And that's the best thing that actually happened to us. Out of necessity, we had to start working for other car companies like Aston Martin, for example. So this is the Aston Martin Volkery battery. The first, let's say, really high profile project came from Koenigsegg. 
So Christian came here and we were like 30 guys. For the regatta. For the regatta. Yeah. Like he was telling me on the phone, like, Mata, I have this idea of a hybrid car with electric motors and no transmission with a combustion engine with a hydro coupe. And like, Christian, I don't understand. Like, can you come over? And he jumped to the next plane from Sweden, came over here. We locked ourselves into the meeting room and sketched it on the whiteboard and so on. And the guys were downstairs doing the calculation. And at the end of the day, we had an idea of how to build the Regera, but it took a few years until we actually did it. I met Christian as well, it's so cool. He has similar to you, this real passion for, for the details, for the engineering, and he's also a fantastic you guy. You know what they say, don't meet your heroes because you'll be disappointed. Mm. In Christian's case, it was absolutely like he's an amazing guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, one of the most brilliant people I met and definitely the guy with the best intuition, technical intuition that I have ever met. Yeah. You know, he was, he and Horacio Pagani were the guys I was looking up to. I want to build my own car. And I knew that hundreds of people have tried and failed, but there were these two guys who have actually made it, yeah. Horacio and Christian. So I thought I'll try it myself. <laughs> and here you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just 10 years later. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the power train of the C2. So we have here the battery pack, and you can see here that it's not um, like a skateboard, yeah. like most other electric cars. Yeah. So why is that? Because we wanted to have the seat as low as possible. And that's not, not so much for weight, but more for aerodynamic performance? Aerodynamic and design. So we don't have batteries here, so that the seat can be as low as possible. You do have battery modules under the feet of the driver and the passenger to give more weight to the front, because when you accelerate to have weight on the, on the front wheels to yeah. use that uh, and for weight distribution obviously. Then a big chunk of the battery is in the rear and this is the power distribution unit, so distributing the energy between the uh, motors and other devices. And then you have the axles. So in the rear you have two motors um, independently with one megawatt of power. So this is just this part is 1300 horsepower. And then in the front we have another two motors with 400 kilowatts of power which is like 600 horsepower. So we have 1,900 horsepower or 1.4 megawatt of power in the car and 120 kilowatt hours for a range of about 550, 600 kilometers. Incredible range. I mean, we were just on the, on the Porsche. This is different numbers, huh? Well, the Porsche is like 93 kilowatt hours. This is yeah. 120. Yeah. So, and the beautiful thing about electric cars is like, you know, when you have a very efficient car, let's say Volkswagen Golf um, diesel yeah. and the Ferrari engine, you know, the Ferrari engine is high performance, more power and so on, but it's also less efficient. With electric motors, it's not like that. So this motor is no less efficient or even more efficient than a family car. So by having more power, if you drive it the same way, you don't actually consume more energy, except of course, wider tires and more aggressive yeah, aerodynamics. Yeah, okay. But in generally the power, so if you let's say have a family car of 100 kilowatt hours and a supercar of 100 kilowatt hours, if you drive them, one behind the other, the range should be very similar. Yeah. And, and weight you managed to, even though you have 120 versus 93 on the Taycan, you've managed to keep the weight similar on the yeah. whole battery system? Uh, the battery system is actually lighter, I think. Light, than the really? Taycan. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's different. This is just your awesome engineering skills, you know what? And cost. <laughs> and co you know, when, you, when the battery can cost like the whole Taycan, yeah. then you can do stuff. Like the okay. whole structure is carbon fiber. There's so much complex carbon fiber okay. there, you, you wouldn't believe okay. it. Like yeah. out of five hypercars that are hybrid or electric, uh, three of them have our, have our battery pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are, I would say, leading in that. Uh, high performance segment yeah. of batteries. And just to help you with your modesty, I think I already said this in a previous video, I spoke to the chief engineering officer at Porsche and he's like, I'm very talented, but Mate, that's another planet. <laughs> <laughs> so that's to help you with your modesty. I'm getting red now. <laughs> okay, so I want to show you our production. Yeah. Um, and so in the headquarters here, we'll go have a tour and then we go to our other production site. We are now building a campus, a huge one, which is 20 times bigger than this location. Wow. Uh, it's already being built at the moment. We are just getting the permits so and we okay. are starting building in uh, early next year. How much is that going to cost? Well, just the building itself without uh, equipment and so on is like 120 million euros. Oof. <laughs> that doesn't come cheap. Yeah. What we have here is uh, a little bit of production. What you will see is some machining and carbon fiber production. Um, then in the other location, you will see the car assembly, powertrain production, and so on. So I'll show you everything. Okay. But in between, we're also going to go through the customization. Absolutely. Which is, I'm very, very excited about. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's do it. So what we have here is uh, machining. So here, for example, we make the tools. 
So the design is design the part, engineers engineer it, then we do all the simulations and uh, iterations and loops and loops and loops. But this process I know very, very well. Yeah? Because uh, the F1 teams F1 go teams through the simple. same. Yes, a lot of people told me that we look like a Formula 1 team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this looks the same. So here we make the tooling and here uh, thousands of different parts. So, uh, door handle of the car yeah. or uh, this is a nice part like a 3D printed um, metal part that you then machine. Yeah. Thousands of different parts are made by us and why we do that because it can be really fast. So we design it one day, the other day we can have it in the car. Yeah. And you know if it's really urgent, these guys will work over night and over the weekend. The supplier might not do that. Thing, everything what can be everything. except the crash structure so right. the monocoque is the biggest one in the road yeah. so you will see it later it's uh, the front and rear suspension are on the same piece yeah. so it's not a separate subframe or anything like yeah. that um, the body and interior are all come fiber so everything a battery pack uh, structures come fiber so a lot of the, the, the parts come fiber actually but this company here is exactly like a Formula One team. I mean, everything is the same. All, the, all this thing is Mercedes F1 team, it's all here. Yeah. It's exactly identical, so that's really impressive. Nice to see. Yeah. So, what you see here is like, a, you know, you wouldn't think this is specifically stiff. Yeah. But this is pre-pre carbon fiber, basically the same used in uh, Formula One. Yeah. And this is going to become a structural part of the car, which is going to be super stiff and super light. Yeah. But you wouldn't think if you look at it. So that's a Koenigsegg Regera part, right there. Yeah. That's how many cars they're still building? <laughs> no, no, no. One, one piece of common fiber in the end but I, but I, but can have like many layers. Many layers yeah. parts. I, just, I was just testing to see if we can get some extra information. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then it's cut here by the machines. Yeah. Uh, and then it goes to the lamination. She's here operating the machine to cut the common fiber pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So are you, Anna, are you excited to see how the the carbon that you're cutting ends up in the in the C2 eventually? Yeah, And you're a fan of materials or you're also a car fan? Cars. Auto. <laughs> how are your wind tunnel numbers? Are you uh, happy with the end result? We have like 98% correlation between the uh, simulations and the, and the models. But also efficiency, uh, you're happy with the... The hardest thing for us was actually not efficiency. We are quite good there. The hardest thing was to get enough cooling into okay. the yeah. radiators. Yeah. Uh, the rear and front power train have different cooling systems. Yeah. So in the front we have a big cooler in the middle for the... But that was more easy with the rear, that's the challenge, right? For the front it's easy yeah. because also the front has a smaller power train. In the rear we have a bigger power train and it's a separate cooling system. So it was really hard to get the air to come in here. That's the only opening? From both sides, yeah. But an electric motor is 90% efficient while the combustion yeah. engine is 25, 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a bit less. Yeah. So we've got Koenigsegg Regera there, battery pack and Aston Martin battery pack and both of them have been through home navigation. Yeah. They look a bit used. Yeah, <laughs> so they were actually on fire. Oh shit, that's why. <laughs> yeah, so the interesting thing is, you know, when something new comes along, People are very cautious. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. The combustion engine car gets crash tested with no fuel in them, it's just water. Yeah. A hybrid or electric car gets tested with a full working battery, fully charged, and everything is monitored. So one of the things they do with the battery actually is to put a huge amount of fuel under the battery, like, I don't know, 50 liters. Yeah. They set the fuel on fire, the battery is on top of it, and then they remove the fire after 30 seconds or so and the battery has to stop burning within five seconds otherwise test the test is not passed okay so these two batteries went through that test yeah this was actually the first one i think that ever went through that new regulation test and it passed for first try so they get all the parts cut out uh, from anna that you saw before and then they have um, instructions on how to put every piece of the, of the puzzle together basically it's a little bit like lego so you know each part where it has to go it's exactly in the right sequence and the right um, angle and it's different materials it can be like 10 different materials for one part cool. not just carbon fiber but also kevlar or or, or uh, copper or anything else yeah. so, so after the lamination process the parts go into the vacuum bags and they go to the autoclaves they get baked 
and then they get, get out of the molds, cut, trim, some parts get upholstered into leather or alcantara, some parts get painted, some parts are pieces of a bigger system. And have you, do you think you're like incredibly technologically advanced even in the, in the materials and composites and carbon fiber compared to other car manufacturers? Well, have I, you managed to innovate that as well a lot or is that difficult? I think we are very good with carbon fiber because we have, on, because on the engineering side. On yep. the production side it's like everywhere else I would say. Yep, yep. Uh, but in engineering, we have very, very good validated dynamic models. The monocoque, for example, was crashed into a wall a million times before we actually produced the first one. And then we, when we produced it, it was very, very close. It was like 97% there. So that's the most important part because when you go through the whole process of designing, making the tool, making the part, crash testing and so on, it's a lot of money and it's a lot of time. Yeah. So if you have a good trust, if you can trust your model yeah. and trust your systems, then you, you are much faster. That's where we are going. And I'll show you that. So you, you're even pioneering in the simulation? I would say we are state of the art there. Really? Wow. Yeah. So not only electrical engineering, also simulation, it's all different areas. Huh? It's, it's a lot of different art. skill sets. I think all the human knowledge is combined in one product. Well, materials, simulations, software, fluid dynamics, aerodynamics, uh, electronics, uh, IT, connectivity. Everything comes together. Also in, in the head there, huh? You can stay modest again. Just say, no. uh, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll take over that part. Do you still know the name of each of your employees? Or? Oh, yeah, you don't know anymore. But anymore? Until, until like one and a half years ago, I, I would know. But no. Okay, so this is something now we can film, but probably you'll have to remove most of it because there's something secret inside, but I'll show it to you. So, uh, just as I said to Mata before, really everything is exactly like a Formula One team, so I'm super impressed. And it really feels, it feels like I'm in a Formula One team, it's incredible. And so, just to top it off, we're now going to the dyno, which is exactly what the Formula One team has as well. Testing all the powertrain, drivetrain, testing the engine, everything. So, same here. Just without the combustion engine, yeah. Without the, without the noise, yeah, I guess. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. This is actually the rear axle of the C2. So, this one has 500 kilowatts and 900 newton meters of torque and 18,000 RPM. So this one did you say? C2. C2. So this is actually just one of them is like 700 horsepower. Yeah. So here you can see the advantage of an electric powertrain. And this motor can accelerate the car from 0 to 100 under 2 seconds and over 400 km per hour top speed with a single speed gearbox. So can we just repeat that? 0 to 100 under 2 seconds. This is official now. Huh? Mata yeah. said it, huh? Yeah. There's no going back on this, huh? No going back. 1.9 seconds, 0 to 100. Yes. Yeah, and with me driving 1.8, by the way, yeah? <laughs> right? <laughs> You're the expert, we'll see. Okay, so this is the vehicle engineering. So these are the guys who are developing the car itself. These guys are just working on the C2 and integrating the components into the car. I'll give you some examples. Um, so an area that you are also very familiar with, uh, vehicle dynamics. So just to show you how it looks there. Gerard. Or Gerhard, or, uh, he's South African, so it's uh, uh, Harald. Yeah, yeah. South <laughs> maybe Nico knows best. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you see, you're, you're starting to get a lot of international. Uh, oh yeah, we have 25 well. nationalities. Yeah. yeah. Wow, yes. that's, that's cool. So I guess you you know how this kind of stuff works. So this looks like a nice computer game, but actually what's going on here? It's all of the models of the car working together to simulate how the car behaves. So this is one lap on the Nurburgring. Yeah, and like. Battery energy is not a problem, but you can see here, as the, the temperature increases, we have to start, uh, so this is actually temperature, so this is maximum we can go with the battery temperature. So then here, like two, two thirds uh, through the lap, we would have to start reducing the power of the car to make it to the end of the lap. So there you lose a lot of time, of course. So then now it's a lot of uh, development to not have that derating, but actually to go all the way through. So, and that's the kind of stuff we can do here. So he can tell the guys, okay, the battery has to be cooled much, much better before we actually build the battery. It's interesting how you use, uh, how you use Nürburgring as such a, such a reference. Yeah, yeah. So like uh, the thermal performance of the battery is usually defined in how many Nürburgring laps you want to do, one, two, or three, without derating. Yeah. And at which point derating is acceptable and what's the target lap time. Actually, that's when you that's develop- amazing. How cool is that? Yeah. So when is the remake going to go live onto the notch lighter? I don't know, when are you taking it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> You're not allowing me to yet. Yeah. 
he was responsible for the aerodynamics development of the car and his team. So he has been working what for four years now on the on the car. Yeah, on this one, but between how and before the battery resistance for Corsica and the uh, yeah. music. Yes. I had a I had a place in Imperial College to study aeronautics. Yeah. yeah. Really? But then I, I took a gap year to go racing and I won the championship. And so then I said okay, I go I try the racing. Good choice I would say. I think it was okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was okay. Yeah. So what you can see here um, where the air is needed. So uh, actually you can see it in the front cooling systems, in the it goes through the rear cooling systems and brakes. So there's a lot of devices that have to get a certain airflow. The problem compared to a combustion engine is, so you have a lot less heat rejection. So combustion engine would waste 60, 70 percent of the, uh, or even more, of the energy from the fuel into heat. Yeah. But uh, the uh, electric car doesn't do that. The difference is that the maximum temperature of the component is much lower. So the battery temperature maximum is 60, 65, maybe 70. So if it's hot outside, if you have 35 degrees of air temperature, you cannot cool it with air at all. The delta T is too low. So then yeah. you have to have a specific air conditioning unit just for the battery to cool the battery down. Ooh. So you lose the energy. It's a very complex system with a lot of systems that have to interact with each other. Yes. Uh, can you tell us also what the biggest challenge was aerodynamically for the performance? The, the biggest challenge were the targets at the beginning because the we targets. said yeah because we set uh, very low targets for the drag coefficient. Yeah. So we had to had to satisfy a big variations between the low drag and very efficient car for the range to the truck performance car which should have high downforce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the biggest challenge I would say. Yes. Yes, that's great. <laughs> what we do, we try to replicate the, the, the phenomenon the way it should be. Basically, we have to make sure that the thing will be the same as when we have here. So this is what we did after the crash. We have to disassemble the car. We have to measure the things to make sure like we were expecting 200 millimeters here. We have to make sure that we had this 200 millimeters. We have That's to a make great benchmark to see where you are. So let's say the, the simulation tells you, you you should have 197 millimeters after the crash. Yeah. And in reality, we have like 200 millimeters. So, yeah. And then you know where you are and you need to, to change yeah, yeah, some things. Yeah. Like, especially at the beginning, you can do Totally different cars, totally different layouts before you actually design, decide to build it. Because if you don't do this at the beginning and you go in one direction and then you figure out, oh, this doesn't work, then you have to go a lot back and lose a lot of time and the money and everything. Yeah. So this is super important. And this dynamic modeling of carbon, where you don't look at carbon as one solid piece, that's something that very few companies do. So that's, I would say, something that we are quite good at. Good. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Gustavo. Gustavo. Thank you. Okay, that's it in the vehicle engineering. So now we are going upstairs to, to uh, design. Like this? Yeah. Yeah, as kids, we used to do pranks like this and then... <laughs> so Adriano is our the director of design. He is with me from the very beginning for 10 yes. years. He designed the concept one on his own basically and now we have a team of what, 20 people? 20 people, yeah. Designing various things, not just the C2, but the C2 from the beginning till the end. What, what I always like to say is that people think the design is sketching, and then the designer sketched something on paper and it The beats. first car was sketching, no? It's always started with sketching, <laughs> but that's 1% of the, pro of the whole process. They have to fulfill all the regulations, all the engineering requirements, producibility, a lot of conflicts between engineering and design. But can I have his? Can I have your input in the customization? He will be with us. Ah, okay. Yeah. But I'm not sure you I, want I that. I would like to uh, <laughs> use some of your skills then to help sure, me out. Sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. No but, problem. But it's uh, not just the car design. It's a lot of other stuff as well. Like for example, infotainment, all the uh, screens and all the user experience is also part of their work. Not just for us, but also for other customers, other car yeah. companies. Uh, so when you already make the part, our philosophy is like, why not make it beautiful? Yeah. It doesn't cost more if it looks good yeah. or looks bad. Yeah. So they are also involved in like, you know, a gearbox development because we want the gearbox to also be nice. You know, Ferrari, when you open up the engine uh, cover and you see the Testarossa engine, you know, it's different than when you see a plastic cover yeah, uh, on top yeah. of an engine. So that's what we try also to represent to make it jewelry. Okay, thanks, Adrian. Good, thank you. See you in a bit then. See you in I, already, I already got a sneak peek on some, uh, on some potential colors, right? This is the 
concept one infotainment system, I wanted it to be very geeky. Stuff that maybe doesn't interest 95% of the people, but I wanted that they can have access to it. So it has the normal stuff like, you know, a nice navigation system and stuff like that. But the important stuff for me was the vehicle data. So for example, you could see the torque on every wheel, where the energy is flowing to, so to the powertrain or the air conditioning or whatever. You could see every battery cell. So when you accelerate, you could see how the voltages of every cell drops. It's a little bit like, you know, the turbo boost. Like why would you look at the turbo boost in a, in a sports car? So with electric cars, that could be the equivalent or like the, the temperature of every system, inlet and outlet that's temperature. That's and crazy. We'll have something like that in the C2 as well. The whole system, so that's actually developed by these guys here, the whole pack. So it's, the, the motors are just one part of the powertrain system. Uh, really important part is of course the gearbox, but also the inverter. One thing that's very important for us is that these people are sitting together, that all is developed under the same roof, and then you can integrate it much better. So this was from the beginning developed as one unit. So these motors will not be something very special without this inverter. Yeah. Because the inverter is designed for this application. There is no one megawatt inverter on the market. Yeah. So we had to develop all of this from scratch to be able to reach the performance targets. So basically what happens is the, the inverter is connected to the battery. Yeah. And then you have one cooling plate and one inverter for one motor and the other inverter for the other motors. So it's two inverters. They are connected then to the motors and the inverter converts the DC current from the battery into an AC current for the motors. Each motor is then connected to one gearbox and each uh, is then connected to its output shaft. So they are in the same gearbox, but this is not the differential. It's just two separate gearboxes in the same housing. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, one wheel could turn in one direction the other wheel could turn in the other, totally independently. So now explain, you've had to put two gears into here to get the acceleration of 1.85. <laughs> you had to put two gears. Yeah. Initially you had planned one gear. Yeah. Explain that please. So we initially, so the, the Concept 1 had a two-speed gearbox. And I hated that. And it was a very different layout. So Just because it's extra weight. And it's that's extra weight, it's inefficiency, it's super expensive. Uh, all the stuff in the gearbox just adds to the losses, you lose yeah. energy and yeah. so on. And it was a different design, the motors were in the middle, the gearboxes were on the sides. So when we started to design the C2, that was like 2016-17, I said I want less than 2.5, like 2.2, 2.3, 200, yeah. and 350 top speed. Yeah. I thought that's the benchmark uh, figures. And just like three months before Geneva, before we presented the car, um, we, we were finalizing the car, it was a single speed gearbox, so I didn't want any two speed gearbox in the car. We, we were having good uh, results, we could achieve those targets with a single speed gearbox, I was happy. And then Tesla came out with the Roadster, they claimed 1.9 seconds 0 to 100 and more than 400 kilometers per hour top speed. And I said, we can't be slower, <laughs> we have to be faster. So, but you know, the monocoque was already defined, so what you have around here, everything is very tightly packaged. So, the monocoque is right here, and then you have you know, a few millimeters of monocoque, and then you have the suspension. So there is no space. You can only make the car wider, but it's already two meters wide, so we couldn't do that. So we were doing, again, like simulations and iterations day and night before Geneva to see if we could package a two-speed gearbox into this package. We couldn't have more space. And we found out that there was a solution which was super complex with you know, Formula One type of titanium as the gears and super complicated. And we managed to do it and to achieve less than two seconds, zero to 100 and more than 400 kilometers per hour. But I hated the two speed gearbox. It, it added a lot of weight. We were like 60 kilos heavier because of that. Yeah. And then after Geneva um, and a few months when we tried the gearbox and I wasn't so happy and so on, I was like, okay, we have to start from scratch and uh, achieve the targets without two speeds. So we went back to the drawing boards, we started to work on the motors and increased the speed from 12,000 RPM to 18,000 and the torque from 700 Newton meters to 900 Newton meters, again in the same package and the same weight. And by investing more in the motors, uh, optimizing that, we could get rid of the two speed gearbox, again design a new one speed gearbox because now we were higher torque and higher speed. So we three times redesigned the whole thing and the guys here were going nuts and like, how can you now change everything again? But we reduced 100 kilos of weight from the wow, rear. Wow, huge. Yeah. So and also, I mean, that's really pioneering to extract so much torque, right? 
it's torque, torque and power. Yeah. Yeah. Well, torque density is the biggest part because actually, you know, what people don't understand, they think electric cars have huge torque. Yeah. Yes, but it, there is a difference. What actually accelerates the car is torque on wheels. And torque on wheels is the engine torque in the combustion engine car multiplied by the gearbox ratio, multiplied by the differential ratio, that's what you get on the wheels. Here, we, we just have one gear in this case now. So the Bugatti Chiron, for example, has 1,500 uh, newton meters on the engine, but on the wheels in first gear, it has 15,000, I think, 15,000. So it multiplies 10 times through the gearbox and through the differentials. Here we have uh, also multiplication, but it's, it's like driving in seventh gear. It's like you start with the seventh gear. So we have to have huge torque. So we have all motors combined, 2,600 newton meters. And then we have a 5.7 uh, gearbox ratio on all four motors. And we have around 13,500 newton meters on the wheels, which is less than the Bugatti Chiron in first gear. But as soon as we are in second gear, we, have, we are way above. So it's a little bit different with, with electric cars than combustion engine cars. You, you can't just look at, you know, motor torque. Like for electric cars, motor torque is really relevant. What you should really look at is wheel torque. Okay, let's move on. This is our battery development. This is where most of the magic happens. So we have here some very interesting projects that uh, are, of course, some of them you know about, but uh, a lot of them uh, I would love to tell you maybe when the cameras are off. <laughs> So, just for everybody who's watching, so Mate and his team, you're world leaders in high performance battery systems. So, can you tell us, like, how do you have this incredible expertise and where is the area where you're so much better than everybody else? Well, it's no magic. It's just we started pretty early and we are focused on that. Like, you know, uh, somebody like Bosch is focused on making the cheapest battery for Golf. Yeah. We are focused on making the highest performance, best performance battery. And in the early days, we were doing that for hypercars and racing. So ultra high performance, but ultra low volume and very expensive. Now we are shifting that towards series. So we have shareholders like Hyundai, Kia, Porsche, and we are trying to apply that now from, from uh, the ultra high performance and low volumes to mass production. Yeah. And we actually have lots of projects with our shareholders, but also with others that are not our shareholders, various German and other European uh, car companies. Uh, where we are developing some really exciting cars at the moment. So we've just recently moved out uh, 100 engineers from here to another building and now they have grown to like 200 there uh, where we do all the electronics, the infotainment, uh, the autonomous driving system. So we are developing this driver coach where the system teaches you how to become the best driver. You, you don't need that but maybe some other customers do. It we'll teaches go. them on a racetrack? Yeah, it's how called to become the, a good driver? It's called the driver coach so the idea is that you have maybe the uh, means to buy such a car, yeah. but not necessarily the skills to f fully utilize it. Yeah. So you go to a racetrack and the car can show you first like two perfect laps on its own. Really? Yeah, okay. well, as perfect as it gets with AI at the moment. And then when you take over that the car can uh, tell you how to better drive, like uh, turn in, brake points and stuff yeah. like that. Welcome to Driver Coach Demo. Wow. Now relax and remember, every day is a journey, and today you live it to the fullest. It's not gentle. Keep close to the right edge. Okay. And that's something we actually uh, wanted to discuss with you, if you could help us with your inputs, and maybe even give the voice to the, to the uh, driver coach. <laughs> sure, sure, but how, how close do you think the AI is going to get to my lap time at the moment? I think that's something we should try. Because I've heard that it's very, very difficult. Yeah, it's, it's not just, uh, like in the simulation itself, it's easier than, of course, in the actual real world, because there's so many factors you, you can't uh, influence. For example, if there is a spot on the track where it's slippery, yeah. it might be uh, easy for you to detect it and you know, react to it. For, for an autonomous driving system, it's much harder. But at the same time, uh, the system can predict some things much better than the than average driver. So I don't think it will get to like your level uh, that soon, but to be better than 98% of the drivers, yes. Okay, I'm gonna take you into the configuration room. Adriano, Adriano is the master, uh, Adriano, right? Yeah, yes, he's yes. the master designer. So this is gonna be super cool to uh, jump into this. 
And of course, I want to hear your comments as well, which color I need to go for. Well, we'll put that up in the video soon. Let's check this out. Our edition, the signature edition, the colors are more vivid. Oof, red is also quite cool. Oh. And now we're just going to finalize the computer to see what, what it looks like. So we just got to the testing site now. <laughs> 